dynamic loft. It's how much loft that you present on the club at impact. There's so many ways to improve through fitting variables and also construction. If you want to find out how to improve your dynamic loft, then this video is right for you. Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Today I'm joined by fellow Master Club Fitter, Danny Farrell. How are you doing today, Danny? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. We're going to be discussing dynamic loft. We've been kind of wanting to do this video again. We've gotten a lot of comments online about it, what exactly it is, and how people can improve that to ultimately improve their game too. Right, and as I mentioned, there's so many ways that you can improve it. It can be either related to fitting topics by the loft on the golf club that you fit someone into. Uh, it can be the club path, how they swing Big the time. club path. It can be to do with their attack angle. Uh, there's so many different ways that you can improve it, and we're gonna discuss how you can improve it through fitting, but also how through you can improve it for instruction as well. I like it. So for today, we're gonna to be hitting some drivers, some seven irons, and some wedges. We're gonna be discussing you know, what a good dynamic loft is, right. what, what is suggested based on what club that you're using, why it's so different with, say, the driver versus the iron. Yep. A lot of this is going to do with your attack angle. 100%. And then why it's so different with a wedge. Uh, it's going to be to do with your ball position. Yeah. So it's going to be a big difference there. Uh, we're going to also explain what a bad dynamic loft is. And I'm going to attempt to try and create some bad dynamic loft swings. Yep. And just see what happens to ball speed, smash factor, spin, sure. height, landing angle, and just see the differences. Let's do it. So really good swing, Thomas, but you're playing 34 degrees aloft, something more traditional, right? But how'd you just hit that 178 yards? Yeah, 178 carry. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yeah, so that bottom right number there, dynamic loft. Yep. So you mentioned that 34 degrees aloft on my seven iron, traditional right. loft, it is not a game improvement seven iron. No. It's not, that's one way to get the dynamic loft down, True. but for me, it's to do with compression. Yeah. So at impact, what I work on really hard is I want to feel like at impact that I'm turning my hips already on the downswing. Okay. And I'm in a position here where the shaft is leaning a little further forward. My left hand yeah. is ahead of the club head. Yeah, and we see that a lot of times when people come in, we see the opposite, where their hands are behind that impact trying to help them get up in the air. Right. That's also why they lose a bunch of distance. But effectively at 24 degrees aloft that you show at impact, a lot of good stuff going on there. Right, yeah, I mean, that's, Pretty much my stock swing right there. Mm -hmm. Hit down on it slightly, about 178, 180 carry. Yeah. That's, that's my swing. Okay, so let's kind of showcase the opposite. See if we can't get you to increase that dynamic loft a little bit. See what happens with club path, face angle ultimately, um, as well as dynamic loft and spin too. So let's right. see if we can't go the other way. So this would be a swing where you consider a lot of, you see a lot of golfers, they try and help the ball up in the air. Right. So it's, it's kind of, a, maybe it's like a swing or a move where a golfer is trying to do this to try and get that ball to, to yeah. get up in the air as opposed to staying down on it and letting the loft of the club get that ball up in the air. Right, and we see that a lot of times with baseball players too. Right? Even though they have a lot of speed, don't need, no, don't need to help get the ball up in the air. The weight is just, it stays on that back side. There's nothing going forward. Right. So, I like that. Okay. All right. Well, this will be a challenge, but I'll, I'll <laughs> see what I can do. Yep. It's going to probably look pretty weird and, and feel pretty weird. So I, I would expect your club speed should probably come down with this one, too. Right. It's going to be hard for me to, to I'll, I'll probably hit really far behind the ball if I <laughs> swing really hard. But let's just see what happens to that dynamic loft here. Yep. Feel like I hung back on that one pretty nicely. All right. Definitely. Wow, that's a swing that I do see a lot in the in the fitting bay. Hundred percent. I mean, my club speed it was almost the same. True. We're talking only one mile an hour less. Yep. But look what happened to that dynamic loft. 32.9. Right, it's almost yeah. 10 degrees higher. Yep. yep. So the loft on this is 34. So True. that's basically at impact. It means that the club was presented like this at impact. True. As opposed to compressed like this. Yeah. yeah. One big factor why that happened, Thomas, is that change in the club path a little bit. Players that are over the top and across a little bit and face angle ultimately open too. That's another key factor on 
why we add more dynamic right. loft. Yeah, and I, I've never spun my seven iron that high in my life. I know it, I yeah. know. But look at the difference in yardage though. 141 right. yards in, in carry as opposed to 178 where we were, all because of that magical number, dynamic loft. I've got some stopping power. You do, you do. But I'm, but I'm losing a lot of distance. Too much, is what it way comes down too to. much yeah. to give up there. Yeah, so let's maybe just look at the numbers between those two shots. I'm curious to see what happens to bowl speed, smash factor, spin, yeah. launch. Yeah. Just see if there's anything that we notice that's really, really clear and reason why we want to compress the ball. Sure. Okay, so bowl speed. Right off the bat there, we lost 13 miles an hour bowl speed. <laughs> that's, Ouch, that yeah, hurts. That's about two full clubs, right. at least. So smash factor is quite the debate on our channel. Especially, you know, when you get a seven iron with the smash factors, getting close to the 1-4 mark. Yeah. A lot of that comes down to how you compress the ball. True. It's, if your dynamic loft is less, you, you have the opportunity to generate right. more club speed. Right. Uh, sorry, more ball speed. Ball speed, yeah. And uh, which is going to bring or up that smash factor, or if you don't right. generate as much ball speed, it's going to bring down that smash True. factor. True, yeah. Yeah, so. No difference on like hit, lo hit location or anything like that. It was just the fact that I had a lot more loft on the club. Yeah. And we're seeing that with the launch angle. <laughs> <laughs> launch angle dramatically higher, spin dramatically higher. But again, you know, biggest way how you're able to go about that was changing your club path too. So, you know, we'll get into more of that stuff as well, but let's right. uh, kind of keep moving across. Landing angle got a lot steeper. It was the same height. Right. Well, actually, just five feet higher. Yeah. But it came in with a lot more stopping power. That landing angle, really, really steep there. Almost, you know, definitely too steep for a lot of players, too. Yeah. And then that, la that attack angle. Mm -hmm. Because uh, at impact, uh, essentially, I was like hanging back. There's yep. no way I can hit down on it <laughs> with, with, an, with an iron. Now, right. when we get to driver, sometimes that's actually a good thing because yes. we want to have the balls on the tee at that point. We want to hit up on a little True. bit. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when we hit driver. Yeah. So now let's try and do the flip side. Let's see if we can't show even less loft. All right. At impact. Lower that dynamic loft again. So when you're about to do this, Thomas, talk us through what's going through your head on how to achieve that. Well, a little bit's going to be bull position. Kay. So naturally, if I have my bull position further back in my stance, at impact, there's a good chance that I'm able to get myself in this spot here. Okay. If my bull position is too far forward, it's really hard to try and get yourself in that, in that position. You have gotcha. to do a lot of leaning, a lot of hip sliding to get yourself mm -hmm. in, in that spot. Okay. Okay. So bull position now is actually just slightly back of middle because I'm really trying to exaggerate this, this move. Gotcha. So I'm trying to feel like I'm really getting myself in this spot here. Okay. And then at impact, I'm trying to feel like this shaft is ahead of the club head. So my hands, this point here at impact, is I'm more in this spot here. Mm -hmm. Do you change anything in terms of at setup? <laughs> Are your hands adjusting more forward off the bat? Or is this something you've, you're going to try and feel more at impact through the swing? I can. You? So I mentioned bowl position. So mm -hmm. imagine you were going to hit a shot with a driver. Your bowl position is going to be kind of towards your, your left heel. Naturally, that shaft's now going to be leaning this way. Right. If you have that move that bull position further back, now it's actually going to be pointing towards the middle or slightly, slightly ahead. True. Okay. So, okay. yes, you can exaggerate a little bit. Let's yeah. see if I can really get one going sure. here with that low sure. dynamic loft. Uh, I think target was 23.9 before, so we'll see where we're at. There we go. <laughs> that was pretty good. That was very, very good. Same club speed, dynamic loft, 15 degrees. Mm -hmm. This one, low shot. It is, yeah. dramatically lower. Launch angle, 11 degree launch angle. <laughs> it's interesting that that spin's almost the same as yeah. before. Yeah, I'm interested by that yeah. too. So why, that's because the attack angle, look at that, look at that attack angle. Mm -hmm. Down seven. I don't think I've ever hit down on that seven before, oh, the seven iron. But yeah, very, very low. Landing angle, very low height. Yeah. It's almost this almost too far. Yeah, I mean yeah. that that ball's ultimately going to have a really hard time stopping. I mean, take a look at the other metrics too. The landing angle, more importantly, we'll see that kind of your stock swing about 51, pretty good there. On the flip side, we went added more loft, we're up to 56.2, and now all of a sudden we're at 40. Right. So that's more so you know more the numbers we're looking for almost out of a driver. Okay, like we want to be in the 30s more so for a driver in that landing angle. 
Well, that is going to have a really, really hard time stopping. But you know, that just showcases with less dynamic loft, you're able to get a faster ball speed out of it. So right. you know, the steps you just kind of walked us through worked. So that could help some players at home right. too. So that's a little more instructional, but let's face it, not everyone's going to put in the time and effort to really try and improve their swing. And you know, when we're fitting, we're definitely looking at that dynamic loft. So yeah. I'll ask you, if you have a player that has a lot of dynamic loft on a golf club, what's mm -hmm. our best way in the fitting bay to reduce that dynamic loft? Give them a player with less loft on it, 100%. You know, always go to the, the ones with the least amount of loft, like the T400, it's got 26 degrees on the seven iron. That way we can kind of get free speed because the loft changes already compared to what the right. player has. Yeah, that or even like kind of power specking something. Sure. I mean, you can Always. still play the, yeah. the same irons that you want to play as opposed to yeah. playing a really game improvement. Yeah. You can make lofts just a couple of degrees stronger. Yeah, That's one way to, to we, help. We got to be careful with that too. I don't want players at home coming in and getting their irons bent five, six degrees strong to help that. There'll be right. no bounce left on the golf club, <laughs> no, unfortunately. No, yeah. so we can't do that. Right. No. Yeah, so I mean, those game improvement irons, yes, they're, they're, they're built with a larger sole for that, for that reason with yeah. a lot less loft on yeah. them. So, yeah. sure. um, should we grab one, just yeah. like a game improvement iron, just to show the differences yeah. in dynamic loft here? Sure. Yeah, we'll hit one where I kind of hang back on it with a game improvement iron. Yeah. And just see what, see what happens. Sure, yeah, I'll grab one. What do you want, T3? Let's go T400. T400, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so that's just the uh, back to the standard sock swing with, with my iron. Correct. Got the Callaway Apex TCB Project X LZ 6.5 golf shaft. Yep. Danny, you took the time to put the exact same golf shaft in the T400. Now, Absolutely. it's not probably a, probably not a club that you're going to pair with this golf shaft too often. No, no, but <laughs> for, for our testing purposes, you know, I want to showcase what more the head does as opposed to the shaft itself. So, right. you know, loft from 34, now we're going to have you put your same stock move on it uh, with the T400 that is lofted at uh, 8 degrees less at 26, and we'll see how that impacts that dynamic loft. Definitely hit the screen lower. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it wasn't the eight degrees. It no. was, no. it was under twenty. Yep. But no. I, uh, I just smoothed that. That was a smooth swing, mm -hmm. <laughs> and not a problem to get that thing over two hundred yards. Yeah. I mean, ball speed. You know, obviously there's eight degrees, you know, in between in terms of loft from the club, but also, you know, the amount of tungsten weight is different from that club head to what you have in yours. Complete different CG design and head design. So it brought us up, you know, 10 miles an hour. Almost hit 1.5 on the smash factor. <laughs> okay, I'm sure we'll hear some feedback on that. Uh, well, we might get there if we uh, intentionally try and compress the ball. We'll see, we'll see like if we can get there. there. But, I like that. Um, yeah, that's what you'd expect. Lower launch angle, a lot less spin, a lot further distance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so should we play around a little bit? So maybe put that bad swing on it again, where we'll yeah. I kind of hang back on it. Yeah. Maybe cut across it a little bit and hang back and finish on my back foot. I got that a little low on the face. But look at that dynamic loft there. Mm -hmm. Before, when we did this, I think we were in the 30s before. Yeah. It's almost like my... Uh, <laughs> like your current? My, my current... Dynamic loft. Well, point three degrees different, obviously ball speed is the, the biggest plague there. Right. Right. Yeah, and as I mentioned, I hit that lower on the face. I yep. hit up on the ball. Well, naturally it's gonna happen when you hang back on it. Mm -hmm. um, spin rate drop about 2,000 RPMs than yeah. when I was hitting my 7i with the same move before. Yeah, so I mean, let's actually talk about that swing versus the higher dynamic The loft. higher one. So let's break down what happened with a higher lofted golf club with that kind of same move at it. But now we'll see the difference with a club head that's geared towards helping that or what advantages that gave you with the same move. Right. Yeah, I mean, you can see I got more ball speed. Yep. Loft, is, loft is helping us out there. And I always say I didn't hit that, that shot very well. 
Right. Uh, lower launch, that's more in the optimal window for right. a launch angle for a seven iron. Yeah. Spin rate, once again, more in that optimal window for oh, a right. for a seven iron. Yeah. Uh, picked up, you know, carry distance there, 158 going 165 versus 141 going 142. Right. So, I mean, picked up club, club and a half there in distance. Huge, yeah, even yeah. with slightly lower club head speed too. <laughs> but again, that's that, that lower loft of club head geared towards this exact thing to help players that you know, either don't have the time or aren't going to put as much work into lowering that dynamic loft. This is a good quick way to help get you a few more yards out there. Right. Okay, so other end of the spectrum, just for fun, yep. see what I can get this thing down to. I think the lowest we've seen is 15 with yours. So we'll, we'll see how low we can get it here. Got to wow. 10. Wow. It's a very, very low dynamic loft there. Yeah. But you see this in play a lot as a driving iron for some players too. You know, where you know Phil Mickelson a couple years back took the, the epic flash iron and made it into a driving iron for this, did. this exact yeah. reason. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of that's a lot of bowl speed there. Yeah. Yeah. 220. Carry, 222, but again, you know, that ball's not stopping anytime time right. soon. Right, it's not stopping, but I'm also missing out on opportunity to hit the ball further because it's so low. True. Yeah, and, I mean, if that was a higher flight, that probably actually might have carried and gone further overall. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's pretty much sums up irons, right? Yeah. Irons, we want to be in an optimal window. When we're, when we're fitting someone, mm -hmm. we want to make sure we get them closer to what we're seeing with, based on their swing tendency. Yeah. And dynamic loft is a great way for us to help to know what kind of loft they should have on their golf club. Mm -hmm. you know, whether they're committed to putting the time or into that or not, or if they're right. just, you know, they understand it, but we just need to make sure we fit them to their dynamic loft. Yeah. yeah. Can you show us one more time kind of your, your thoughts at impact with irons, you know, versus when the club is at its stated loft at impact versus kind of where we want to be to lower that dynamic right. loft. Can you kind of showcase yeah. that again? So I'll, I'll even add this uh, alignment stick in here just as a good way to, to help. Um, so at impact, the, the bad swing tendency, I see a lot of golfers, they try and help the ball up in there. Notice how this hits me in the side and mm -hmm. it's, it's gonna hurt, right? Yeah. Notice this is just, this is a, a move that I see a lot of times from a lot of golfers, they're trying to help the ball up in there. They just don't understand that a loft of the club's gonna get them up in the air. Yeah. I do the same move here now, but I turn and finish on my left side. Notice how that never hit me on the side at all. Mm -hmm. So ideally we want to try and get ourselves in a position where we're here, we turned our body, our left hand's a little bit ahead of the club head. Yeah. The shaft's leaning forward. Forward means less loft on the club, which mm -hmm. is reducing the dynamic loft. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, I love that drill. It's a quick way for players at home to get that feedback, feedback on where my hands are during the golf swing and how to replicate things a little bit differently right. too. And I, I do this, I even practice it still myself. Like yeah. even just pitching, I'll occasionally kind of remind myself 30, 40 yard pitch shots. I don't see, don't do it full swing because eventually this is going to hit you. <laughs> right. But just little shots here where you just turn through. This thing's never hitting me in the side. Yeah. It's just forcing me to finish on my left side. Mm -hmm. and turn through, but at impact, I'm here, turning through. Yeah, it's, perfect. Yeah, it's such a good drill. I, I love teaching people how to hit this, this particular shot because it's gonna help them one, hit the ground, mm -hmm. but also compress the ball and get the ball go further. Love it, love it. So let's uh, kind of kid our way over to the driver okay. conversation. So this will be different because it's gonna be a lot to do with attack angle. True. So now we're gonna actually probably have to play around with attack angle to show the differences. Right, right, yep. yeah. So I'll, I'll do my normal swing first. Okay. That felt like a pretty good swing. 17. There we go. Yep. That's pretty close to my, my stock swing with driver. Yeah. Yeah, so. Attack angle. Mm -hmm. This is the only time where you know we're focused more on swing up at right. the golf ball, right? Right. We now we're at, it's okay for you to feel like it impact that that left shoulder is a little higher than that right because the ball is yeah. on the tee. Yeah. Still want to make sure we turn through and finish on our left side. We don't True. want to try and feel like you're just hanging back like this. Yeah. But that drill you gave earlier with the irons and the wedges probably shouldn't be used in this case. Right. Because we are changing that hand position due to the length 
and ultimately how we want to come into that golf ball too. Right. Hand position is different because now the ball position is forward in my stance. Right. So impact, you do want to kind of add it up on the ball and add yep. a little bit of loft there. Yeah. So you can see that dynamic loft was 17.3. Mm -hmm. Loft on my driver is nine. Right. So, so you added eight degrees more, but then that's when fitting comes into play to get the launch and to spin ultimately down to help get you all that distance out there. Right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So now yep. let's kind of see if we can't do the same thing. This might be a little bit more difficult. You gonna try and get me to hit down on it? Do we, have a, do we have a different driver? I, <laughs> I don't, I I don't would, want to put a yeah, skyboard. Just in case, I'll grab something <laughs> a little bit different. Oh, it's fine. I'll hit my own driver. I'll try to put a dummy mark on it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So kind of same things that you're, you did in the iron zone, you're going to do with the driver in terms of trying to put a band-aid on it, you know, moving ball position slightly. Right. I'm okay. adjusting the ball position to show okay. the differences in ideal versus not so gotcha. ideal. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So this is basically like right in the middle of my stance with driver. Okay. Nice. Wow, that is one low golf shot. Well done. So we got that attack angle, huge swing. You know, from about eight up or you know, where we were before, now we're down just by moving ball position a little bit. Okay. Um, <laughs> height, 13 feet. Look at that dynamic loft there, 3.6, okay. That's why it only carried 176 yards, went 236 right. total. Yeah, so if you had a golfer, you know, that's in this situation when you're seeing the dynamic very low, mm -hmm. once again, we probably need loft on the driver to help. Them. 100%. You know, we'd probably suggest the bull position a little bit there yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, but loft is your friend. Yeah. So yep. nine degrees of loft, if you, if you were gonna add I mean, you need 13, 14 degrees of loft on the, on the driver for this if they were going to swing that way. Yeah, probably give them the mini driver. You know, yeah. That would come into mind. But you know, that's why we always ask players when they come in, are you working on anything in the golf swing right now? If not, then let's pitch you to what, you know, where we are today. If there are things that you want to work on during the golf swing, we want to be here to kind of build that along the way for you. Because if, you know, if I would have let you out the door swinging there, you wouldn't have liked that fit too much. <laughs> right. I thought it was funny that my spin rate was almost identical to the shot before. That was fantastic. That, it's, that's, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's all because I mean, that face angle was open. Right. Right. I mean, even though yeah. we showed three six, probably cut out a little bit of the heel, which made the spin come up marginally. Right. Probably a good thing that, that face is open. Otherwise, there yeah. might have been. I don't know if you can you get a negative dynamic loft or can you get a negative launch angle. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I want to keep that driver in one solid piece for you. Though, so. <laughs> Right, and I don't know if I want to make that swing again. <laughs> yeah, so let's uh, see if we can't go on the flip side, add a little bit more. Okay. So we went down from 3.6, we were at about 17. I actually hit that really well. <laughs> wow. <laughs> don't see my attack angle in the, uh, in the double figures very often, but <laughs> that, was, uh, that was a pretty good swing. So in this case, we would need less loft on the driver. 100%. Yeah, if someone has uh, that high of attack angle yeah. and hit the ball fairly straight, you can get away with less loft. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. that's the, be the beauty of modern tech now is you can play with that and adjust that too. But, you know, dynamic loft came up from 17 to 20. The biggest influence on that was launch, right? Came up about four degrees up to 19.2 where the spin stayed constant. That's why we still got 287, 299, but in order for us to optimize everything and not have a drive go 176 feet in the air, that might be a problem there. Right. Yeah, that's, th yeah. that's landing angle of 50 degrees. That's the same as what my 7-iron was before. <laughs> True. And it's probably the same as a lot of people's pitching wedges. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Thomas, let's go to the iron. Show me that visual one more time you know, with the alignment stick, just so viewers at home get you know, one more take on how they can help fix that as well. Yeah, I would like to call this... I mean, it's the compression pitch is what, what I call it here. Yeah. Um, so you can get a stick like this from Home Depot Menards for two bucks. Right. Um, there's some smaller ones that you can actually put in the top of your grip as well if mm. you're kind of worried sure. about sure. how it's going to feel because yeah. it is making the grip a little larger. Yeah. You can tape it here or you can just kind of sit, sit on the back side. What you do want to make sure is you want to make sure it's on your left side for a right-handed golfer mm -hmm. or your right-hand side for a left-handed golfer. Right. 
Um, so it sits underneath your arm here on your left side of your hip. And the feeling you want to feel is that when you're coming through is at impact that this shaft here is leaning that direction. Gotcha. The shaft and the stick's leaning that direction. We turn our hips a little bit more. This is going to clear out of the way and it's never going to hit you on the side. Yeah. So. And, you know, this shouldn't be used for a full swing. You should be going full swing, hanging on to this and the club itself. Right, about a 40 yard shot, that's all you need to hit it. Yep, it's all just about trying to feel and make it real. All right, Love it. so yeah, so this didn't hit me on the side, it's not even close. Yep, so I mean loft, what do you have there in your hand right now, loft wise? On the this wedge? is a 56 degree wedge. Okay, so yep. I mean that plays out perfectly, it just showed 37.1 at impact. All right, and then keep in mind this is obviously an exaggeration. Yep. But this is the feeling you want to feel coming through. Turn through, make sure your hips turn, make sure this stick doesn't hit you in the side. So Thomas, we covered a lot of ground today. You gave viewers some great tips on how they can handle that, especially in the off season here in Minnesota where things get cold. It's a great way to kind of bring in a new swing into 2022 for players. So thanks for taking the time. Um, anything else that we left on the table that you want to leave at home? I don't think so. I think this okay. is plenty. Yeah. I would say when you are working on this on your own, keep it simple. Yes. And I say keep this is plenty. You don't want to be over, overthinking it. Just keep it to two or three things to think about when you're sure. working on any swing changes at all. So guys, if you like what you saw on the channel, smash that like button. Leave us a comment on how your game is going to change, what things you're going to be working on. And ultimately, let's get some alignment sticks in your hands, change that game in 2022. Thank you.